When Morsleib hangs heavy in the heavens like the belly of a pregnant hag, the skies of the old world fill with the beating of malevolent wings. They come from mountain caves, from the deep forest, and from the frozen north to spread misery among the races of order. None are safe from their harsh ministrations, be they man, orc, or elf. Their savagery and hunger are renowned among the men of the Empire, Bretonia, and Kislev, and their presence is seen as an ill omen. They swarm over abandoned battlefields, glutting themselves on the dead and dying. These twisted fiends are not undead or demons of chaos. Instead, these monsters have an almost pleasing appearance, at least until they reveal the spiteful taint within. They are harpies, and the passing of their shadows overhead strikes terror into the hearts of men. Despite not being demons, harpies are still twisted creatures of chaos, melding the features of a bat, a woman, and a bird of prey. Their faces and torsos appear human, perhaps even beautiful, from a distance. The illusion quickly fades as a harpy draws near, their countenance twisting into a feral rage as their lips peel back to reveal a row of needle-like teeth. Their legs are those of a great bird, and both their hands and feet end in elongated talons, capable of gutting a man as easily as a sword. Yet it is the massive, membranous wings that spring from a harpy's back that are their most obvious connection to the forces of chaos. It is these wings that let harpies soar across the battlefield, descending upon their prey in an orgy of blood and violence. As befits a monster of chaos, harpies are most commonly found near the northern chaos wastes. Their black wings darken the skies of Norska, Troll Country, the Northern Steppes, and even distant Nagaroth. They aren't constrained to these realms, however, and can be found all across the globe. These southern harpies tend to congregate around beastmen herdstones, drawn by the same forces that compel gores to erect such monuments in the first place. They roost in the forest canopy, watching the brave shamans engage in their barbaric rituals. Only once the festivities are over and the beastmen have fallen into a drunken stupor will the harpies descend, feasting upon the remains of the beastmen's victims. Some enterprising gores will intentionally leave carcasses out for the harpies, hoping to draw the avian monstrosities to their banner. This ploy is often successful, and flocks of harpies are commonly seen accompanying beastmen bray herds as they gallop into war. In battle, harpies form frenzied, disorganized mobs. While they follow the will of the Brayherd's Beast Lord, they have no unit commanders, only following the lead of whichever harpy is strongest in that moment. Harpies are no less devastating for this disarray, as their viciousness and spite compensates for their lack of organization. They excel at identifying weak or vulnerable enemies, striking with speed and strength beyond what their slender human frames would suggest. Trained soldiers can fall before the onslaught of a frenzied harpy, their throats slit or their bellies opened by the creature's talons. A harpy can even lift a fully armored knight from his steed, ascending into the sky before dropping him to a grisly demise. Despite this lethality, harpies are also innately cowardly creatures. If outnumbered or facing a stronger opponent, they will quickly turn tail and flee into the heavens. Once the battle is over, however, they are sure to return, like overgrown carrion birds. Harpies are consummate scavengers, combing through the battlefields of the old world for their next meal. They are not picky about what they'll eat, feasting upon the flesh of their fellows as easily as their foes. Due to their close association with chaos in general, and the beastmen in particular, harpies are seen as ill omens throughout the entirety of the old world. As they often signal the presence of beastmen, this isn't mere superstition. Bretonians in the northeastern dukedoms take this belief one step further, attributing further supernatural powers to the twisted creatures. They claim that harpies possess a malevolent beauty that enchants those with tainted blood, capable of stupefying individuals who have come too close to chaos. These impure individuals are mesmerized by the harpies, unable to move or react as the monsters rip apart their companions and feast upon their flesh. Once the bloodletting is complete, according to the legends, these unfortunate souls are carried away to the monster's roost. 
There they act as playthings and toys for the harpies, until the creatures inevitably grow bored or hungry, at which point they are cruelly disposed of. While they're most commonly associated with beastmen, harpies can also be found in service of the Dark Elves of Nagaroth. They dwell amongst the uppermost spires of Karan Kar, and their presence is seen as a good omen within the city. It's popularly believed that, should the harpies abandon Karan Kar, the city would soon meet its end. Superstitious or religious Dark Elves claim that harpies are the reborn spirits of slain witch elves, or perhaps manifestations of Cain himself. Their savagery in battle would seem to attest to this, as they are certainly as vicious as any child of Nagaroth. While incapable of pledging loyalty to the Druji, whole flocks of the beasts will willingly accompany Black Arks, patiently trailing them for months at a time in hopes of some great battle. Some come along less freely, having been captured by cruel beastmasters. Whatever their circumstances, the harpies fight fiercely, savaging the Druji's enemies with talon and claw. As a reward, they may freely feast upon the dead and dying after a battle, glutting themselves upon those who would dare oppose Malekith's people. Because of their ties to chaos, harpies will occasionally mutate in horrific ways. Some may burn with a perverse wildfire that doesn't appear to mar their flesh. Those touched by the harpy are not so lucky, catching fire even as they are torn apart by the beast. These unholy flames are born from chaos itself and are infused with magic, capable of harming ghosts and spirits as surely as mortal men. Other harpies have venomous ooze dripping from their claws. These toxins are incredibly potent, capable of killing a man in minutes. Thankfully, such mutations are rare, and most harpies only have the razor-sharp talons common to their kind. In Total War Warhammer, harpies are a unit on the Beastmen and Dark Elf rosters. Weighing in at 500 gold in multiplayer, they perform the same role in both factions, harassing the enemy back line and escorting fleeing units off the battlefield. In this way, harpies are very similar to light cavalry or hound units. At a d4 speed, they aren't quite as fast as their terrestrial counterparts, but they're still quick enough to chase off all but the swiftness of routing enemies. Harpies also have the advantage of being able to fly over enemy units that would otherwise protect a gunline or artillery piece, ensuring they can take the shortest route to their target. Their high weapon strength means harpies can quickly cut through undefended cannon crews or handgunners once they do close the gap. The foul bird women also act as a flanking unit, collapsing on an opponent's rear while they're engaged with your more robust infantry. Thanks to their flight ability, it's even easier for harpies to do this than most pursuit units, as they can go right over the melee before circling around again in a deadly descent. Though they're nowhere near as lethal as a charging unit of Reichsguard, that leadership penalty can still provide a crucial edge in close fights. Unlike other pursuit units, harpies can act as serviceable roadblocks as well. They probably won't do too much damage in the process, as their melee attack of 22 leaves them poorly equipped for a fair fight, but their relatively high melee defense of 38 means they can gum up advancing units for quite a while, letting the rest of your army get into position. That does mean harpies are invincible, of course, and a pitiful leadership of 52 combined with an armor value of 15 means they'll quickly crumble against anything that can get through their melee defense. This usually isn't the best use of them, as it usually isn't cost efficient, but it can be handy in a pinch. As always, the end of our Total War segment will bring us to the end of our overview of Harpies. Their chaotic nature is definitely a departure from their origins in Greek myths, where they acted as divine spirits of vengeance for Zeus. Still, there are several similarities between mythological Harpies and their Warhammer counterparts. Both are described as cruel, vicious, and spiteful creatures, and the Warhammer versions have retained the blending of female and avian characteristics that characterized them in mythology. In many ways, harpies were already perfect for Warhammer fantasy. You just needed to drop the divine mandate, and you have monsters that work perfectly alongside the bloodthirsty beastmen or sadistic dark elves. Sticking this closer to the mythological roots may have done harpies a disservice, however. Harpies don't have enough intelligence or personality to be characters, and their design is a bit uninspired. I can't say I dislike them, but I also can't say I think enough about them to really feel one way or the other about them. That's all my thoughts of that I have on them for today, though. So, until next time, this has been Sigmar's Chosen, signing off for now.